The Roland DJ707M is the first controller directly aimed at the mobile market. Working with mobile DJs from around the world with their input influencing the final design of this controller, has Roland finally created the ultimate all-in-one solution for mobile DJs? Let's find out. With the M in the model name referring to mobile, it is no surprise to find that the 707M is a small, lightweight controller. Primarily built to plastic, with only metal being used where absolutely necessary to keep the weight down, such as in the EQ pots and faders, and also on the mixer faceplate. The 707M sits just a little bit wider than most of its rival's two-channel controllers. Don't let the lightweight and small build worry you though. Roland DJ understand that a major part of mobile DJing is taking your equipment from venue to venue with heavy workloads and lots of transportation. And for that reason, the entire mixer section is user serviceable. So you'll be able to buy spare faders, cross faders and EQ knobs should any of them fail you in the future. When designing this controller, Roland worked closely with mobile DJs from around the world and that is shown in the final design. Features such as needle position indicators on the jog wheels simply aren't of importance to most party DJs, so they're not here. The same goes for the long throw pitch faders, with these small ones taking their place, and the three individual effects controls for Serato DJ are replaced with the simple one wet dry control here, and then you've simply got one, two and three buttons here to select the individual effects on and off. Don't worry though, Absolutely, all of the Serato DJ performance features such as rolls, slices, pitch play, things like that, they can all be found on the pads. The pads are just a bit smaller than what you'd find on rival controllers. These decisions haven't been taken lightly, but a lot of the core functionality of Serato DJ is still found within this controller. It's just the fact that mobile DJs will often be found scratching, key shifting, remixing songs on the fly. So it's kind of pointless wasting space putting those buttons in when mobile DJs really care about the footprint and the design of the controller being light and portable. Despite its small footprint, the DJ707M comes complete with a four channel mixer. This mixer can be used to mix external sources as well as the four virtual decks within Serato DJ. On the back of the unit, we find four line inputs for the four channels, so you can connect CDJs or iPods and such. We find two phono inputs, which can be used just to mix turntables, or you can purchase the Serato DVS license separately if you wish. And we also find two USB inputs, so you can switch between two laptops on the fly for back-to-back -back DJing. The crossfader is fully adjustable on the front of the device down here. We have a full crossfader curve control. And in the center of the mixer, we have dedicated controls for the sampler volume, the booth output, which is on TRS balanced jacks, the master output, which is on XLR balanced jacks and unbalanced RCA connectors, and then the zone output, which is on RCA connectors, and this is great for sending external sources to separate speakers, or maybe you want to control the master output uh, to a separate set of speakers as well, or you know maybe even use it to record your sets. Gives you great control as that, and you can change the output of it up here in the utility. One of the biggest selling points about the 707M and its most unique feature by far is the onboard sound processing unit in the top right hand corner. Now this main controller here will control a vast variety of the settings inside the controller itself, but it also controls your sound output and much, much more. So let's have a look at the screen and see what it's all about. As default, you can see the four BPM values for your decks within Serato DJ. These change as soon as you change um, anything on Serato DJ. So as I move that pitch fader, you can see that the uh, BPM values are changing there. And then to enter the menu, we just simply tap the menu button here. When we enter the menu, we're greeted by scene edit, and then we've got scene save, scene load, system settings, and version menu, and then factory reset. Up at the top, so what scenes are, is you can save up to 10 scenes, and that's 10 scenarios for all the controls and settings within the control itself. So if you're a DJ that maybe has various packages available to your clients, say you have a mobile DJ for a wedding package with smaller speakers, and then you've got a big party starter package with bigger speakers, you can control, um, you can set and control the parameters within the controller to suit each package or each set of speakers you're gonna work with, and then save these as scenes. So then when you go out and maybe you're going to do the wedding, you can just load up the wedding scene, press a button, 
and boom, your controller will remember all the settings that you've programmed for them speakers. So let's have a look at what parameters you can change within these scenes. So within the scenes, we can change the mixer settings. In here, we can change which uh, color effects we have on the color effects knob. They can go from filter, dub echo, jet, noise, delay, bit crush and phaser, plus many, many more. We can change these individually. So if we actually want Dubaco on one and filter on the other, we can change them individually rather than changing them all at once. So you can change the four different filters here. We have anti-feedback for the microphones, which we can turn on or off. We have which mode the mix is in. Note you can actually change this to iOS, so you can plug in a iPad um, if you don't want to use Serato with it. The iPad, however, doesn't enable you to DJ on the iPad. It's just so you can use the 707M as a output with a lightning connector rather than, you know, a lot of iPads don't have auxiliary jacks on them anymore. So that's why you just flick it into that mode. We can change the DVS mode from turntable to CDJ. So that's relating to the Serato DVS license if you purchase that. And then out of the mixer section, we could change the microphone settings. So we've got microphone one and microphone two. So we'll just have a quick look in microphone one. In here, you can change the gain level on that microphone. We do have a level control up here on the top left hand corner, but you can change the overall gain of that channel. Say if you've got an instrumental list and you need a bit more gain, you can change that within here. We've also got the EQ settings. So we can change this free band EQ from being an equalizer to an isolator if we require total kill. We have the effects. So this is the vocal effects on that channel one. These are absolutely crazy. So what we've got in here, we've got everything from reverb and echo all the way through to pictures, megaphones and harmony. And to give you an idea how good these sound, I'll just test out harmony above here for you so you can check out how this sounds because it's a bit crazy. So this is the clean channel, and then as I press the effects on, this is harmony, harmony above. above. And, and just, just to give you another, you another idea, idea of how, how powerful, powerful these microphone settings are, are, this is reverb, reverb echo. echo. Reverb echo. Reverb echo. So really powerful effects there. Some that you probably never ever use, some that are really handy. We've also got microphone two setting, which is basically the same thing for microphone one, but for the second channel. Microphone three, which is found down the front. And then we've got our master out setting. So what we can change in here, we can change what actually gets put through the master out. So we can sign everything, all the mix, everything from the controller out, or we can just send the booth output, which would take away the microphone inputs and the external devices, or we can just send the deck inputs or we could be custom if we want to go into that and change even further settings. Below, we've got the EQ gain. So we've got a low EQ gain, how many decibels we want to push the low EQ up by. Low mid, and then the frequency of each parameter of the mixer. Again, very advanced settings. We don't really think many people will be like messing with these, but the options there if you want it. High mid, the high mid frequency, the high gain. And then we've got our compression settings. So for the master, the booth, and the zone output, there is actually a compressor built into this sound effects unit. So if you need to take away some of that volume, some of that peak, if your speakers can't handle with a certain amount of the frequencies, you can actually change that from within here. So we've got our compression settings, and then we've got a limiter as well. So if you want to just reduce the entire output of this controller to make sure your speakers never, no matter who's DJing on this, never get damaged, never you know, reach that peak voltage where speakers might get blown. You can actually limit the unit from within here itself. We can turn on mono mode if you're not using the stereo output. And then we can pan change, and change the uh, attenuation as well. So that was the master settings. We can do the exact same with the booth settings and then the zone output settings as well. And then that is your scene edit. So then once we've changed all them settings and we've changed the parameters of the controller, we've set our limiters, set our compressions, set the booth output to do something different to the master and sent the zone completely elsewhere. We can save all them by clicking on scene save. And we can choose between all these scenes in here. Do note that 
Uh, as standard, Roland will give you six preset saved scenes. You can just overwrite them if you wish, or it's worth having a look through to see if there's anything in there you might actually like already. But then you can just find a, a spare blank scene and you can change it. You can even change the name of the scene in here by using the uh, little knob here and you can go through the full alphabet and change the scene name and then exit that and saved. That's how you save a setting. You can recall it by scrolling down again by scene load and then you can go through all these saved scenes, find the one we've just saved, press load, press OK, and we're in. This screen is so powerful and so unique to this controller. It's exactly what a mobile DJ needs. If anything, it's complete overkill, but it's there if you need it. Being a Roland controller, it really would break the mold if this didn't contain a drum machine of some sort. Unlike its brother and sister controllers, which carry drum machines across the top, Roland obviously don't think party DJs are going to be using the drum feature as often as maybe you produce the DJs. For that reason, it's slightly hidden away, but you can access the drum machine. What you do is you just flick across to the third deck here, make sure you're on the third deck by making sure this is red, and then simply you can press play on a number of preset loops, or you can create your own by using the sampler and using the drum machine there, or like I said, just go to hot cue, and you just hit play, and there's a drum machine built in. Not only that, but on the right hand side, on deck four, we actually have an oscillator. Bit of an odd choice, not quite sure who'd be using this as often, but the option's there. Again, just flick across to deck four, make sure you're on the red, and then all of a sudden, the sampler mode will automatically engage, and you've got eight oscillations. These are great if you want to uh, help do build-ups and breakdowns in your mixes. It's a bit of a gimmick, but it's there should you need it. And there we have it, the DJ707M. This controller is an absolute masterclass in what can be achieved in such a small footprint. I mean, this thing's barely wider than most two-channel controllers, and yet it packs so much more functionality into it. It's not going to be for everyone, but that's okay, because this thing is an absolute... Dream come true for all you mobile DJs out there. There's a lot more private parties, a lot more weddings and birthdays and everything that go on every weekend, all through the week, in fact, rather than the one or two club nights that actually happen where you need the more performance-based features. This controller, no doubt, will sell very well with all you mobile DJs out there. Is it for the performance guys? I think not, but that's okay. We hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more content like this, and we'll catch you in another one.